Being a character in a fighting game series is a lot like being in an organized crime family. Once you're in, you're in for life. That's except for the occasional fighting game characters who prove to be so weird or out of place or just downright unpopular that they only appear in one game in a franchise and then disappear, never to be seen again. Which is also a bit like an organized crime family. But I digress. Please enjoy these seven examples of fighting game characters being given the old metaphorical concrete shoes. Release the girl, beast. We both fight, Snowman. I will show you mercy. Round one, fight! They say that two heads are better than one, but when it's decapitation-happy Mortal Kombat you're talking about, you should consider yourself lucky to even have that. Nonetheless, Ferra and Tor, who collectively make up one character in Mortal Kombat X, do work much better as a team than they would individually. Ferra Tor. Ferra and Tor are two separate entities that fight together as one. Ferra is the small, smart one who rides around on the shoulders of the much larger Tor, directing their attacks and formulating ingenious tactics for the team. We take Bug Lady's place. <laughs> Never. Never and now! Sure, it's basic, but still better than what Tor would have come up with. Anyway, Ferra and Tor are very effective, combining Tor's brute strength grappling with the ranged attack opportunities facilitated by hurling Ferra at an enemy. <laughs> This is why it was a surprise to see that the gruesome twosome didn't make a repeat appearance in Mortal Kombat 11 after their debut in Mortal Kombat X, making them the only new character from X not to get an encore. Maybe they had a falling out? I get it, going around together like this all the time, it's like a long distance car journey that never ends. Have you seen Ferrator? Only their corpses, Collector. Oh, or they were killed off screen? Damn, Netherrealm. Even Su Hao got to come back for Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and everyone hates him. <laughs> Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter imagines the incredible fights that would take place if the characters from the Marvel Universe took on the cast of the Street Fighter games, and it was the first time we saw such legendary combatants as Spider-Man, Captain America, Ken, and Ryu go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. For the Japanese arcade and home versions of the game, Capcom had the opportunity to create an exclusive character. They decided to use this opportunity to add the character Norimaro, who is a small, nervous high school student with an old man face who knows nothing about fighting. <laughs> Ready. Truly, this should lead to some clashes for the ages. In keeping with his role as comic relief, Noromaro has a fighting style that could charitably be described as ineffectual flailing, and uncharitably described as someone who just walked into an unexpected spider web. <laughs> also, one of Noromaro's most powerful attacks involves panic throwing the contents of his satchel at his opponent. <laughs> Needless to say, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter was the only time that Noromaro appeared in a fighting game. The official reason for this is that the rights to the character are held by three different companies, namely Capcom, Nippon TV, and the agency of the comedian who co-created him. Our theory, however, well, I mean, look at him. You decide. His purpose is shrouded in mystery. Todd McFarlane is a comic book creator best known for Spawn, the best Spider-Man costume, and, of course, the PlayStation 2 game McFarlane's Evil Prophecy. A classic. This wasn't the only time Todd McFarlane has been involved in video games, however. He also designed a new character for Soul Calibur 2 called Necrid, who is, how to put this, extremely Todd McFarlane. <laughs> Necrid is a bald green guy with a big claw hand and a glowing gemstone embedded in his chest for some reason. His fighting style is a jumbled mishmash of the other fighters from the game, with the difference being that Necrid's weapons are made of energy that he's able to harness after having been consumed by the legendary sword, Soul Edge. You win! Yes. Nevertheless, Necrid was not a popular character, with many critics claiming that McFarlane had phoned it in on this character design when compared with his more notable works. Namco may have shared this opinion because Necrid hasn't appeared again in another Soul Calibur game. This, we should probably remind you, isn't a series that's super picky about which characters it includes. Even Dampierre got two games. Burn, Necrid. I will face underappreciation, bear the weight of oppression upon my shoulders. And we'll make new friends and hold discussions with them over fine food. No matter what, I will always whip up a meal for my adversaries. 
Now, I'm not saying that Capcom decides on new Street Fighter characters by pulling random fridge poetry tiles out of a bag, sticking them to a whiteboard, and then going with whatever it says, but you come up with a better explanation for El Fuerte, who is a Mexican wrestler chef. It's super dynamic cooking time! That's not to say that El Fuerte isn't a fun character. His whole backstory of wanting to get better at fighting by combining recipes from various world-class fighters is quite charming, and he's got some great flashy luchador moves that are very satisfying to pull off. He's also super quick and can hit hard, which makes it somewhat disappointing that the game he was introduced in, namely Street Fighter 4 and its updates, marked the first and last appearance for El Fuerte in the series so far. Sure, there's only been one game, Street Fighter 5, since then, but seeing as that currently has 38 characters and none of them are El Fuerte, we're not holding out much hope. Santo Stew, of course! Oh no, Borscht is best! Well then, mixing them together would yield the greatest taste in all history! If he never returns, we have to assume that his canonical fate was being murdered by E. Honda and Zangief after he tried to serve them this. Ha! It tastes so great, it sends you straight to heaven! Yeah, something's sending you to heaven, Fuerte. I just don't think it's going to be the food. If you're after weird fighting game characters, Guilty Gear is the series for you. You'll be spoiled for choice between the guy possessed by the ghost from the ring, the guy who's asleep for all his matches, and the haiku obsessed Dracula. The truth is out there. A vile blood problem with multiple wives. Which is to say, you'd have to be really effing weird for Guilty Gear not to invite you back for another game. But that's the fate that befell Leopoldon, a character from the sixth installment in the series, Guilty Gear Iska, who really has to be seen to be believed. Ok, so a lot to unpack here, but it seems that Leopoldon is this mysterious grey armoured dude at the back. The weird gross thing with the arms and legs that he's sitting in is what is known in the Guilty Gear universe as a gear, a sort of biological mech suit, and the thing in front of him is his faithful dog, who he's brought along presumably because he couldn't find a dog sitter. We can probably take a few guesses as to why Leopoldon wasn't invited back for another Guilty Gear game. For a start, he's horrible to look at, looking kind of like a giant hippo choking to death on its dinner. Then there's the confusion around it actually being three different things, the fact that it takes up half the screen, and the incredibly annoying way that it's invulnerable to any attacks that aren't aimed at its head. Heads. Whatever. Also, does anyone want to explain why he hatches out of a cloud that looks like an old man's face? I guess we did finally find something too weird for Guilty Gear. Nice work, everyone. Marvel vs. Capcom mashes up the myriad heroes and villains of the Marvel and Capcom universes, which makes for a roster of wildly diverse fighters who draw their powers from wildly diverse sources, like having guns, I found Wesker, I'm bringing him in, or strict adherence to correct legal procedure, one who actually committed the crime is you. Or, in the case of Amaterasu, the divine power of being an actual sun god in the form of a white wolf. Yes, MVC3 added the mystical canine protagonist of Akami to the Marvel vs. Capcom lineup to do battle with the likes of the Hulk and Deadpool with a celestial arsenal of ice powers, a magic glaive, and headbutts. This non-speaking deity, with her dignified total lack of trash talk, was practically the inverse of Chatterbox Deadpool. And yet, Amaterasu was conspicuously absent from subsequent MVC games, most recently the sixth main game in the series, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Presumably because they were terrified of the unstoppable power of a sun god with an infinity stone. Or because she wouldn't stop peeing on her defeated opponents. There's such a thing as being a bad winner, you know. Bloody Raw is a little different from your average fighting game. 
It might have a cast of human fighters, but those characters can each turn into a different anthropomorphic animal by activating a special ability known as a Beast Rave, which sounds a lot like the closing party at an international furry convention. One character who never made it past the first game in the series was Circus Strongman slash Ringmaster Greg, who insists on wearing a top hat that always gets kicked off his head within the first 10 seconds of a match. You want to put a chin strap on that thing or something? Still, whoever kicked it off is going to immediately regret that decision when already quite hench Greg turns into an only slightly more hench Silver Gorilla. Given that everyone else is turning into weird stuff like giant moles and tigers and things, it makes Greg's transformation look like an explosion of body hair. Perhaps that's why he never earned a spot in Bloody Raw 2, Bloody Raw 3, Bloody Raw Primal Fury, or indeed Bloody Raw 4, which reframes his victory animation from a celebratory wave to a sort of tragic farewell. Yeah, you win. Hey, don't feel too bad, he's going to save a fortune on hats. There you have it, there were some more of the would-be fighting game stars whose franchises moved on without them. Any other favourites we missed? Let us know in the comments below and like and subscribe for more videos like this from Outside Xbox. Thanks for watching.